her school and her students from Bear Hill, Bear Hill School from Pittsfield, New Hampshire. Um, please remember that this is being videotaped, so you've got to be as quiet as possible because the video camera picks up any noises that are possible. So please be quiet and enjoy the show. Scott, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to just move up a little bit closer. So if everybody wants to come forward, uh, three or four feet, that's good right there. That's perfect. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, you all ready to get started? All right. Good morning. Thank you very much for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. These students are from Bear Hill School, as Scott mentioned, uh, in Pittsfield, New Hampshire, which is about 25 minutes from here, over on Route 28, near the Epson traffic circle. And these students have uh, put on presentations, uh, drug education lectures, for about two years now. And it's their show. Before I turn it over to them, I want to ask you guys a few questions. Can you help me up with a few answers? Yeah. Okay, I have three questions. First question, how many of you believe that drugs are a major problem in the world today? Can I see you? Great, thank you very much. Second question, how many of you believe that something can and should be done about the problem of drugs? Excellent. Last question. How many of you believe that young people, like yourself, have some responsibility to do something about the drug problem in the world today? Very good. Thank you very much. We agree with you. And that's what these students do. They've given drug education presentations to 6,000 or more students in the state of New Hampshire in the last two years, 30 or 40 different schools, students just like yourselves, some of them have appeared on TV talk shows and radio talk shows. And they're an excellent example of young people doing something about the drug problem and taking responsibility so we can look forward, we can all look forward to a drug-free future. Okay? So I'd like to turn it over to them now. Would you please help me welcome them and welcome our first speaker, Luke Burns. Luke? Rob you of life. 
Now, in order to learn a little bit more about life, we're going to talk about what's called a tone scale. Now, what a tone scale is, is it's a scale of life, and it has many different feelings on it. And you might go through these feelings as you go through life. And the first and lowest feeling on the tone scale is apathy. Now, apathy means when you totally give it up on life or a certain part of life. Like you could give up on school or you could give up like on a sport. All right? All right, great. I'm gonna give you an example. Say there's this kid and this is, today he's gonna take his final test and if he doesn't pass this test, he's gonna have to stay back next year. So if he really wants to pass this, he's like, okay, I can pass this. So he goes in and he flips the test over and looks at it and there's not one single problem he knows on the whole test. He's like, oh man, I'm, I'm not smart at all. I'm gonna quit school right now and never ever come back. So that kid was in was in apathy about school, all right? All right, good. Who here has seen someone in apathy? All right, good. Now I want everyone to think of an example of apathy. Okay, does anyone have an example they'd like to share with the class? Yeah, you. Um, well, when somebody like has a baseball game and they miss a um hit that someone hit to them and they drop it and the whole team's mad and then they go back. Okay, good example. Did you guys hear him? Oh, okay, well, what he said was, you're playing baseball and you messed up really bad and all your teammates were mad at you because you, were, you, lost, you lost the game for them. So he was an apathy about baseball, right? Yeah. All right, good. Uh, yeah, you? Okay, good. He said when you're really like psyched up to do something with your parents, like you're gonna go somewhere, and then all of a sudden they like have to do something else. Right? Alright, good example. I'll take one more. You yeah. Um you when you're when you're Okay. Good example. So, like, what you're in apathy about because your dog ran away, or because you're, why you're in apathy? Are you in apathy? Who is? Someone you know? Okay. All right. Good example. Uh, now, I want everyone, to look at your partner's chin and say hello as if you were in apathy. Now everyone look back up here. Grief is when you're sad. It doesn't necessarily mean you walk up to someone and say hi and they go, <laughs> and they walk off crying. It could mean that, but it doesn't have to mean that. It could also mean that they just sort of look like this. They just sort of look sad. Who here has seen someone in grief? Okay, good. Everybody think of an example of grief. Okay, good example. He said like if you're like playing sports or something and like you lose or something, you might be sad because you lost the game.
Sympathy is when you feel sorry for someone, but you don't do anything to help them. Let me give you an example. Say you knew someone who was being beat up by some bullies, and you didn't do anything to help them. That would be sympathy. Everyone think of an example. Okay, you? Okay, good. Does everyone hear what he said? No. He said if someone was doing something and somebody else came up and started messing it up. Okay, you? Okay, great example. Did everyone hear what he said? No. Okay, he said that um, if somebody was walking along and someone started beating him up and you felt sorry for him. Okay, I can take one more. Um, you? Yeah.
she said that when her mom comes home, she like gets a new haircut, and then her mom says, do you like it? And then she says, oh yeah, and then she goes over to her dad and says, ooh, it's a bad haircut. Okay, I can only take one more, how about, yep.
thousand, and he, he gets really bored in the car because there's nothing to do. Here. Okay, great example. He said, like, when you're the only one at home and, like, you have a few games, but there's nothing really fun to do because there's no one there to play with. I can't take any more. So look at your partners as if you're in boredom. Now say hello. Good. Can I have your attention back up here, please? Yeah. 
hurt you to uh, 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 Patriots or a Red Sox game, and you're like all happy because they invited you to go. Okay, good. You? Um, when you go to like um, friend's house and you're really excited to go, you can like have fun and jump on their trampoline. Okay, good.
right, good, yeah. Uh, what a hangover is, it, after you drink too much alcohol or take too much drugs, the next morning you don't feel too good, like you gotta you know, have a headache and you might puke. So, you guys got a hangover, and after the hangover wears off, he slowly comes back up to where he was before to boredom, except now he's a little bit lower. And the difference is so small that he doesn't realize that he's gotten lower. So he thinks, oh, this drug's not bad for me, I'm fine. All my friends were wrong, drugs are cool. So he decides to take the drugs again, and they lift him up to a fake enthusiasm. And, the, and, and he's really goofy, he's like, hey, hey, hey. And he's really goofy and stuff, and after the drugs wear off, he goes way down, he's like, oh, my head, and he's puking, and he feels really sick. Then the hangover wears off, and he slowly comes back up to where he was before the boredom, except now he's a little bit lower. And the difference is still too small for him to notice. So he still thinks that it's not doing anything to him. So he keeps on taking the drugs, and he keeps on going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And let's say a couple months later, he's down here at Anchor, and he comes home from school, and his mom says, oh, hi, how's your day at school? And he goes, oh, it was so dumb, I hated it. I'm never going back there ever again. He goes to his room and slams the door. So now he's an anchor, and he doesn't have as many friends as he used to when he's up here on board. So he keeps on taking the drugs. He keeps on going lower, lower, lower. And let's see, a few months later, he's in covert hostility. Now, remember that the person in covert hostility is pretending to be your friend, and he's pretending to be nice, but he really hates you. So right now, he might be so addicted to drugs that he needs lots and lots of money to buy drugs, because drugs are expensive. So what do you think he might start doing to get money? Yeah. All right, good. Anybody else? Yeah? Good, stealing. What else? Yeah? Okay, yeah? Uh, yeah? What? Okay, you might you know, pretend to sell drugs, but they're not really drugs to get money. Okay, well, he, yeah? Okay, I'm going to tell you guys, um, he was very close, okay? Uh, pretty close, actually very close. Uh, what he started doing is he started selling drugs, okay? He started selling drugs, yeah? Yeah, he could do that. Uh, I'm gonna tell you guys. I yeah. Okay. Well, this is what he's gonna. What he does is he's gonna start selling drugs. So this is what he does. He goes out and buys drugs for himself, and then he goes out and sells the drugs, and he gets money, and he takes that money and goes out and buys drugs for himself, and then he goes out and sells the rest and gets more money. And he goes out and takes that money and he goes out and buys more drugs for himself. And he sells out and gets sells it and gets more money. And every time he's taking the drugs, he's going lower and lower and lower and lower. And let's say about one year later, he's way, way down here in Athens. And he's practically dead from taking the drugs. But wait, the story doesn't end there. What happened to the people who he was selling the drugs to? They're going lower and lower just like him, right? And then they're gonna pass through covert hostility, and what are they gonna start doing? Selling drugs. Selling drugs, that's right. So then, pretty much all the people who are selling drugs and taking drugs are gonna end up leading miserable lives, lives just like him, right? That's right, so if someone comes up to you and tries to sell you drugs, and he's pretending to be your friend, and he's pretending to be nice, where do you think he is on the tone scale? That's right, he's in covert hostility. Now, how many real friends do you think the person in covert hostility has? That's right. Well, he might have some, but he might, or he might, have, he might have like five or whatever, but he won't have them for long because they'll be taking drugs with him and they'll be going lower and lower just like him. And other friends that were way up here in the higher tone don't want to have anything to do with him because he's taking drugs, right? That's right. So who do you think is surviving better, the person in covert hostility or the person in boredom? That's right. So what we're trying to show you here is that drugs rob you of life and they kill you. And we got this information from a man named L. Ron Hubbard, and he did a lot of extensive research on drugs and alcohol abuse. So we really have to thank for this information. And we hope that what we said today helps make a decision to go up with life rather than down with drugs. We got this, and before we end off, let's just say you guys have been a good audience, so give yourself a hand.
Any questions? Yeah? Well, great. Um, I think fifth through seventh. Five through seventh. Any other questions? Yeah? Most people start out using drugs at boredom. Yeah. Yep. Anyone? Yeah? Yeah? How many schools have we been to? I don't know, about 50. Right? About 50. We've done like 5,000. We just spoken to about 5,000 kids. Okay, yeah, you? You know, you know a lot about being crazy and enthusiastic. You do? All the, all the people do. It's like you're on TV. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you? Why? She said, why would someone start them anyway? Um, well, they might start them because they got nothing else to do. Or like they might want to like try it out. Or I don't know, some, some people like doing them. Like uh, it makes them all goofy or some people like it. Some, sometimes it gives them energy and they just like that. Thank you. 